dense, moisture. At certain parts, it got hard to breathe because of how much water was down there. But before too long, catching his breath will be the least of Christopher's worries. Because just a short ways in, as he comes to a bend in the tunnel, watch closely. slow motion as two mysterious pairs of glowing eyes peek around the tunnel wall staring directly at Christopher in 1960 two explorers discovered a veritable monster in the Mariana Trench but before we tell you all about it subscribe so you don't run into it at a depth of around 15,000 meters they heard strange noises but what followed was even more terrifying. On their screen, they see a massive three-headed shadow. They think it's a deep sea hallucination, but when they returned, the walls of the submarine had been destroyed and a 15 meter long tooth had remained embedded in the stern. The explorers assumed it was the fearsome Leviathan. Dragons are actually real. Yes, you heard that right. Everyone knows that dragons existed in the past, but what if I told you they still exist today? In 2022, Isaac Cox decided to go on a journey to discover the truth about the existence of dragons. He had heard many theories stating that those mysterious creatures had been spotted in the middle of the Holocene volcano in China. So he embarked on a plane to Changbaishan, the closest town to the volcano. Upon arriving at his destination, Isaac equipped himself with hiking gear and started climbing toward the top of the volcano. But after three hours of effort, he started hearing loud noises. As he finally reached the top, he saw six huge and majestic dragons. He took out his phone and started filming before quickly sending the footage to his wife. But while he turned around to leave, one of the dragons threw a massive flame toward him. From that day, Isaac disappeared without a trace. You'd better not know what's lurking at the bottom of the ocean. So subscribe now to avoid meeting these monsters. NASA research was abruptly halted in 1978. It is said that we have only explored 5% of the vast oceans that surround our planet, leaving room for countless discoveries. Are the legends of the Megalodon and the Kraken more than just myths? NASA, after starting to map the ocean depths in 1958, mysteriously ended the program, despite its initial goal of leaving Earth. But what did NASA discover to bring it to an abrupt halt? Did they discover monsters, aliens? Only they know. Ten cryptids that might just be out there. First, the Yeti said to dwell in the Himalayas. Next, the Loch Ness Monster, reportedly lurking in Scotland's Loch Ness. The Jersey Devil, a creature haunting New Jersey's Pine Barrens. Bigfoot, a hairy figure walking upright through the North American wilderness. The Chupacabra, a vampire-like creature seen in Latin America. Mothman, a winged, red-eyed entity reported in West Virginia. El Chupacabra of Puerto Rico, a hopping, alien-like being. The Thunderbird, a giant bird in Native American folklore. Mokele Mbembe, a creature in Central Africa, often compared to a dinosaur. Finally, the Kraken, a colossal sea monster from Scandinavian folklore, big enough to engulf ships. What is going on, my brothers and sisters in Christ? All right. Well, guess what? This is another Genesis 6 study. Yes, I'm sorry. And <laughs> we got to get on the topic of creatures. All right. We got to get y'all familiar with this word called cryptid. Okay. And you might be asking, what's a cryptid? Well, here's a cryptid. A cryptid, an animal such as a Sasquatch or the Loch Ness Monster that has been claimed to exist but never proven to exist. Contrary to popular belief, cryptids don't have to be supernatural, mythical, or even all that strange. Though many popular creatures acquire these characteristics as their legends grow. And before we go any further, let's open up with a word of prayer, shall we? 
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, Holy Spirit, thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to wake up, see another day. Thank you so much, Lord, for being our Lord and Savior, Creator, and leading us to the right path, the truth, and the way, and that's you, Lord Jesus Christ. We love you. We thank you. We give you all the glory and praise and honor. Lord, help every single person that's listening to this lesson and bless every single one of them. Be with them, Lord. Help us, Lord. You, you can do it all, and we know you can. And it's in your precious name we pray all this, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And before we go into the Bible, I want you guys to know this before we go any further when we read these Bible verses. All right. So the original English definition, uh, this is the Noah Webster's first dictionary, his 1828 edition, lists unicorn with the following definition, an animal with one horn, uh, the monosaurus. This name is often applied to the rhinosaurus. If we look up the word rhinoceros in the same dictionary, it defines rhinoceros as a genian, genus of a corp trip. I don't know how to say this word of two species, one of which the unicorn has a single horn growing almost erect from the nose. There is another species with two horns, the biocornis. They are natives of Asia and of Africa. According to Noah Webster, back in the early 1800s, there were two species of the rhinoceros. The one horn species was called unicorn, and the two horn species was called bicornia. So we'll be discussing unicorns, dragons, the behemoth, and the leviathan. All right. These are creatures that's described in the Bible that God uh, describes of, of his handiwork of the behemoth and the leviathan. Uh, the dragon is described um, all throughout the Bible, pretty much. But the thing about the, the dragon, you know, we say the word dinosaur now. Um, in my personal opinion, I believe that the dinosaurs were the dragons. And, you know, the, the, the everything but the wing part, it didn't fossilize. Honestly, that's just my personal opinion. Um, and the unicorn, um, was there a horse with wings? No, I don't believe there was a horse with wings. But however, I do believe that a unicorn existed with a horse with one horn. All right. That's me. Okay. There, it, it's just weird that they're describing a rhinoceros now. You know, it's just, I, that's just my personal opinion. But I'll show you what the behemoth and Leviathan look like. When you look up the behemoth, this is what you'll see, uh, basically. And then we'll go to the Bible verse and, you know, describe and see about the behemoth and what it really is. And then you have the Leviathan. All right. So now the Leviathan, we're going to have to actually get full text with this creature. OK, because me personally, I do believe that there is a huge sea serpent or whatever or something that's big that's in that ocean uh a kraken as well uh that's somewhere in that ocean and i believe you know nasa was freaked out when they saw something you know huge and they're like yo hold up we gotta get out of here because if you look up nasa was wasn't really trying to get up in space they was really uh, discovering things in the ocean and they only got like five to eight percent or something like that and that's not much in the ocean is a lot so i really do believe there's kingdoms and things that's down there but my personal opinion all right but um i also want y'all to be familiar with the i believe we touched bases on the sphinxes um remember sphinx that does not just come up in egypt all right we also have sphinx in italy sphinx in china greece and in, uh, india and then the persia okay and then persia is iraq is modern day persia okay all right so let's dive into the bible go to genesis 1 and go to verse 20 we need to know you know that there are god's perfect creations remember god created everything to be perfect and everything to be good so you always have to remember what's the full text and 
what these creatures originate from. All right. Remember, the devil comes to steal, kill and destroy. All right. So let's go to read and let's start at verse 20. Then God said, let the waters swarm with fish and other life. <clears throat> OK, let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water and every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply. Let the fish fill the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And evening passed and morning came, marking the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and wild animals. And that is what happened. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock, and small animals, each able to produce offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. All right. So let's stop right there. Let's compare um, the verses here. Um, verse 20 and 21. All right. Let's go to the KJV and see what it says. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great wells and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after is his kind. And God saw that it was good. So the only reason why I'm going to put the Catholic public domain on here is just to show you the dirt trickery of course uh and then god said let the waters produce animals with a living soul and flying creatures above the earth and under the firmament of heaven and god created the great sea creatures and everything with a living soul and the ability to move that the waters produced according to their species <laughs> species no and all the flying creatures according to their kind how are you gonna get species and kind that the two different words right there y'all gotta know the two dip, two different definitions of species and kind and god saw that it was good all right and i want y'all to remember all right that when you find out the origin of the roman catholic and find out everything that they represent and then you'll see the pope wearing this big old weird hat We'll talk about all that when we get down to that study, but let's get it very clear here. Uh, the KJV says whales. All right. Great whales. Okay. And every living creature that moveth. Okay. Um, which the water uh, brought forth abundantly. So there's a lot of creatures in the waters that we discover daily. And not only that on land. Um, so when it comes down to this topic and this subject creatures, I mean, it's really not that hard to believe that there are weird creatures out there. All right. Now hop over to Genesis nine and we'll start at verse eight. And then God told Noah and his sons, I hereby confirm my covenant with you and your descendants and with all the animals that were on the boat with you the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, every living creature on earth. Yes, I am confirming my covenant with you. Never again will floodwaters kill a living creatures. Never again will a flood destroy the earth. So then God said, I am giving you a sign of my covenant with you and with all living creatures for all generations to come. I have placed my rainbow in the clouds. It is the sign of my covenant with you and with all the earth. When I send clouds over the earth, the rainbow will appear in the clouds, and I will remember my covenant with you and with all living creatures. Never again will the floodwaters destroy all life. When I see the rainbow in the clouds, I will remember the eternal covenant between God and every living creature on earth.
Then God said to Noah, yes, this rainbow is the sign of the covenant I am confirming with all the creatures on earth. Now hop on over to Job chapter 30 and we're going to go to verse 29. All right. And I want y'all to know this before I even continue on reading on Job. Find out that Job is actually a book that is similar. Well, not similar. I shouldn't say uh, it's something that should have been written in the time of Genesis. Like um, this is the closest thing we'll get to what was life on earth um so, you know uh, supposed before the flood okay so job lived before the flood just know this when you read the book of job all right so what the animals he see all right and then y'all also have to remember that the timeline from adam to noah is two thousand years and whatever he saw i mean there could have been different creatures back then you got to remember the fallen angels was tampering with dna making the nephilims and making all these other weird creatures things all right so job 30 and 29 instead i am considered a brother to jackals and a companion to owl owls all right you will see that is saying that in the niv as well okay and then I'm not going to read the Amplified or the the American Standard, but I, however, I do want to read the KJB. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. All right, guys, when you read the KJV, it's symbolic, not symbolic to the point where everything's symbolic. There's certain things that's symbolic in the Bible, and certain things that's not. But what I'm trying to get at here is what, why is this author describing this particular verse as a dragon, a brother as a dragon? Um, they will have to know what a dragon is in order to say what what is he describing? What's a dragon? You know, like uh, so they can find out what he's talking about all right so we all know what a dragon is and if dragons are dictated and described all over the world then by all means i believe there's too much evidence to say that there wasn't dragons i believe that there were dragons and i believe that the dinosaur fossils and bones are dragons all right so my personal opinion you can look into it for yourself but you will see it's going to point down that originated from you know dinosaurs reptilians whatever you're gonna see dragons all right now hop on over to job 39 and we'll read verses 9 through 10 will the wild ox consent to being tamed will it spend the night in your stall can you hitch a wild ox to a plow plow will it plow a field for you all right and then niv is similar all right and then when we go all the way down to the kjb the kjb says will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by the crib kansas thou bind the unicorn with his band in the fury or will he harrow the valleys after thee all right so the kjb is describing unicorns to serve thee all right and then when you look at the word unicorn you know one common argument against the inspiration or even the trustworthiness of the bible is that it affirms the existence of mythical creatures for example atheist jason long says the cock I don't know what that is. Uh, unicorn and dragon are examples of mythical creatures uh, in the Bible that fail to leave any reliable evidence for their existence. All right. So do these legendary animals prove the Bible itself a collection of legends? No, because in most cases, the Bible is affirming the existence of real animals. It is only the work of later translators and not Bible bible's original authors that refers to these legendary creatures this is especially pre prevalent in the king james version of the bible or the kjb which became popular for skeptics to quote ever since steve wells used the translations for his popular skeptics anoint uh, a noted bible in this post uh, uh sorry i'm not gonna read that but unicorn okay a unicorn is a horse with a long horn that pro 
protrudes from uh, its forehead that medieval literature describes as possessing mechanical or even magical powers. In the KJV, the unicorn is depicted as a symbol of strength and wild power. All right. So with that being said, guys, they're going to boil down to the unicorn either being called the rhinoceros. All right. So like I said, do, do I personally believe that unicorns exist? Me personally, yeah. I don't see why they will describe a one, you know, horned horse, you know, doing labor work. I've never seen anybody use a rhinoceros to do labor work for them. So I'm, I know they're describing, can you tame a rhinoceros to, you know, do your labor work? You, you know, but in, in all cases, you know, I'm not even thinking about a rhinoceros. He's a wild animal, but a horse, however, you know, I'm thinking about a horse doing this, doing that. So when I can see that a unicorn is, you know, identical to what horses, donkeys or mules do, you know, they do a lot for livestock for us. And I'm, you know, seeing the comparisons of a unicorn and a horse. All right. But that's just my personal opinion. Everyone is titled to their opinion. So hop on over to Job 40, and we're going to read verse 15. Take a look at Behemoth, which I made, just as I made you. It eats grass like an ox. All right, and then and I'll be similar. Uh, the Amplified is, com it's it, and the thing is about the Amplified, they got it right with the hippopotamus. I mean, when it boils down to it, the, the Behemoth is going, they're going to say it's the hippopotamus. All right, so behold now the Behemoth. Hippopotamus, which I created as I did you. He eats grass like an ox. All right, let, now let's see, you know, what the KJV says. All right, so the KJV says, you know, behold, now behemoth, which I made with thee, he eateth grass as an ox. All right, and then you have the Catholic do me. The mountains bring forth grass for him. All the beasts of the field will play there. I don't know. What the heck? They they, they 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 weird. All right, but yeah, everything else will describe the behemoth. All right, but it's going to boil down to the hippopotamus. All right, so now hop on over to Job forty one. All right, and this is going to be talking about the Leviathan. All right, so go to Job uh, forty one. We're going to start at verse one. Can you catch Leviathan with a hook, or put a noose around its jaw? Can you tie it with a rope through the nose or pierce its jaw with a spike? Will it beg you for mercy or implore you for pity? Will it agree to work for you to be your slave for life? Can you make it a pet like a bird or give it to your little girls to play with? Will merchants try to buy it to sell it in their shops? Will its hide be hurt by spikes? ears or its head by a harpoon if you lay a hand on it you will certainly remember the battle that follows you won't try that again no it is useless to try to capture it the hunter who attempts it will be knocked down and since no one dares to disturb it who then can stand up to me who has given me anything that i need to pay back everything under heaven is mine I want to emphasize Leviathan's limbs and its no, n enormous strength and graceful form. Who can strip off its hide? And who can penetrate its double layer of armor? Who could pry open its jaws? For its teeth are terrible. The scales on its back are like rows of shields tightly sealed together. They are so close together that no air can get between them. Each scale sticks tight to the next. They interlock and cannot be penetrated. When it sneezes, it flashes light. Its eyes are like the red of dawn. Lightning leaps from its mouth. Flames of fire flash out. Smoke streams from its nostrils like steam from a pot heated over burning rushes. Its breath will kindle coals for flames shoot from its mouth. The tremendous strength in Leviathan's neck strikes terror wherever it goes. Its flesh is hard and firm and cannot be penetrated. 
It's hard as hard as rock, hard as a millstone. When it rises, the mighty are afraid, gripped by terror. No sword can stop it, no spear, dart, or javelin. Iron is nothing but straw to that creature. And bronze is like rotten wood. Arrows cannot make it flee. Stones shot from a sling are like bits of grass. Clubs are like a blade of grass. And its laugh at the swish of javelins. Its belly is covered with scales as sharp as glass. It plows up the ground as it drags through the mud. Leviathan makes the water boil with its commotion. It stirs the depths like a pot of ointment. The water glistens in its wake, making the sea look white. Nothing on earth is its equal. No other creature so fearless. Of all the creatures, it is the proudest. It is the king of beasts so like i said do i believe there's a big old sea creature down in that ocean yes i do all right so god says what he means he means what he says and i i oh my goodness the leviathan whew, if god created something like that don't be surprised that the devil tried to copycat all right so then the Leviathan is showing you God's handiwork, okay, how powerful he is, and the Leviathan even submits to him, okay? So things like the Sasquatch, the Loch Ness Monster, like I said, I believe the Kraken's real, the Loch Ness Monster, and Leviathan, all right? Uh, the Sasquatch, I truly believe that there was a fallen angel that made it with an ape, all right? And the ape looks like that, you know, I don't know, you know, it's pretty much a, a Chewbacca. All right, so the Sasquatch, you know. So I'm, I'm not surprised if any of this stuff exists, to be honest, okay? It's not a surprise, guys. Y'all got to get out of your minds of this normalization that the devil really is doing to everyone, saying nothing exists that's mystical or spiritual, basically. But y'all got to remember, if it wasn't for the spiritual realm, the physical realm would even exist. Thank you. Something that marine biologists have never seen before. You see the shark swimming around. And then all of a sudden, this creature attaches itself to the shark, and the shark starts thrashing around, but we can't tell what exactly it is. You can see this creature latch on to the shark, to the face of the shark. It is not another shark. It looks like a prehistoric creature with a giant mouth, and it's biting off the shark's head. Something that marine biologists have never seen. And cone creatures caught on camera in the woods. A giant. Don't you love me and you know it makes me sad. off the northern coast of Taiwan. An enormous deep sea oarfish was spotted by divers. The creature's over six feet long. It was dotted with what appear to be giant bite marks. Now the oarfish is known as a messenger from the sea god's palace. It's gained a reputation as a doomsday harbinger of sorts. Local legend claims the oarfish appears just before natural. Mermaids are actually real. Yes, you heard that right. In 2021, a man named Elian Burks decided to uncover the truth about the existence of mermaids. With two of his friends, Case and Zach, he set out for the deep sea. From there, they explored the Pacific Ocean for weeks without finding anything. Until one day, they started hearing a charming song coming from the depths of the ocean. After a few minutes, a creature with the lower body of a fish and the upper body of a woman, also known as a mermaid, emerged from the water. However, as they were all looking at the creature, Case, charmed by the mermaid's melodious singing, jumped into the water. In a hurry, Elian grabbed the earplugs he had prepared, gave one to Zack, and inserted it into his ears. He then started filming, when all of a sudden the mermaid dove deep into the water with Case's body. From that day, all three friends remained untraceable. 
Subscribe and share with a friend for... Dinosaurs are fake. The idea of a class of prehistoric reptiles called Dinosauria was first posited in 1842 by Sir Richard Owen of the Royal Society. After this unproven theory was generated, thousands of dinosaur bones were conveniently found in the following years, but only by those with a vested interest in the new field of paleontology. Ironically enough, no dinosaur bones were ever found by the participants of the 1848 gold rush, taking place at the same time. It's also interesting to note that no Native Americans have records of prehistoric reptiles in their history. In fact, no ancient civilization in the world does. They do have record of giants that lived among them, however, much like other civilizations around the world. It was actually universally accepted and recorded that giants like the Nephilim of the Bible were a reality in the Americas and the world at large. Even President Abraham Lincoln makes reference to them in one of his speeches isn't it funny how dinosaurs become reality at the same time that giants become a myth? A group of people that say that dragons were real, and I'll explain. So around the same time period in, you know, China, South America, Africa, all these different, Rome, all these places, images depicted people fighting dragons, right? And every, every dragon was slightly different, but it was all a giant scaly animal that could fly. So when you, when you break that down, you think about the fact that large birds had a hard time being fossilized because their bones are so porous, right? They break down very easily and they don't fossilize. So the, the, the group that says this, basically they're, they're saying the evidence is the reason there's no fossils of dragons is because they had bird bones and they were actually very delicate animals. A small population of these giant li flying lizards existed and basically encompassed all these different countries where they all depicted fighting dragons in their own way and they were all killed off by, you know, knights or whatever it is, and then didn't fossilize. What? So it's like the science is saying that if there were lizards big enough to fly around and eat people, they Ew. didn't have bones that could fossilize. Is this proof that dragons really exist? If you look back across ancient history, whether it's China, Africa, or Rome, you would notice that many pictures often depict humans fighting dragons for survival. However, these pictures were almost always brushed off as the work of imagination. But that might not be true anymore. Well, you see, scientists have now revealed that they found a dragon the size of a small plane frozen in Canada, known as the Pterosaurus. And being one of the few dinosaurs found perfectly preserved, it's just a matter of time before its DNA gets reanimated and roams the Earth again. With so much of the Earth unexplored, experts are wondering how many more frozen mythical creatures are waiting to be found. But for now... Years, visitors to Scotland's Loch Ness have sworn that they have seen a monster coming up from the depths. Now the question is, has Nessie come to the United States? A mysterious sea creature was just spotted off the coast of North Carolina, and it's got a lot of people scratching their heads. What on earth is that? Look at that. The giant sea creature was spotted off the coast of North Carolina. I stood up real quick and I said, oh my gosh, it was kind of like we saw a dinosaur. The Twitterverse is going into overdrive. A reference to the legendary Loch Ness Monster of Scottish folklore. are lucky to watch dragons in their skies. 
This dragon spotted in real life is one of the most famous on the web. It was taken high in the mountains. At first, the man thought it was a big bird, but then he zoomed the picture and saw the creature closely. He lost all doubts. First place goes to this impressive video. Two tourists managed to catch this unusual creature on camera. It looks like the loathsome Hydra, which was slain by Hercules. The creature was enormous. Despite the big distance, we can still hear its roar. This video is not fake, and you're going to be as shocked as I was when I first saw it. This guy and his dog were walking in the forest somewhere, and then all of a sudden, they come across a mythological beast. I mean, what the hell is that? In February 2018, in Vietnam, a group of young people went fishing in Ma Trang Lagoon at night. After a while removing the fish caught in the net, they discovered that there was a silver ring stuck to the net. The young man was observing the bracelet when a hand reached out and pulled him under the water. Some people thought it was just a fake video, but after taking a closer look at the video they discovered it was indeed a raised hand with a black face and bright eyes hidden under the water. This hand performs the action very quickly, only when slowing down the video can be clearly seen. This young man was later successfully rescued by others after he had drunk a full stomach of water. We gotta praise God. Let's count our blessings. I teach you a lesson, and yeah, we gon' praise God. Yeah, uh. We gotta praise God. Let's count.